Okay, hi everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to uh, my talk about uh, the magic of uh, SQL Alchemy. Uh, my name is Moran Cohen, and uh, I'm an independent software and uh, data engineer. I've been working with Python uh, since uh, 2001, and I've been doing uh, multiple projects uh, in uh, business intelligence and data extraction, data engineering, uh, analysis, and data science. And uh, so what's on the agenda? So first I want to talk about uh, generalities uh, relating to developing in a, a relational database system. Um, <clears throat> and also some background about SQL Alchemy. Then I will give some, uh, dive in a little bit into uh, SQL Alchemy Core and SQL Alchemy ORM, two components, uh, two interrelated components of uh, SQL Alchemy which uh, I use a lot uh, during my day-to-day uh, -day job. So, the first uh, thing that uh, I want to uh, mention, one issue that uh, often uh, you come around when you work with a, a, a general purpose uh, programming language such as Python, and also you want to use a, a database, is that you notice that there are uh, many commonalities between the data structures that you use uh, internally, such as a, a class, and the, con the database concepts of uh, a table. So you have, uh, like, quite naturally, a, a correspondence between a, a, a table on the database side and a class uh, in your uh, programming language. Uh, you have a correspondence between a column on the database and a, a property a, a in the programming language, and also there's a, a correspondence between rows in the database. They correspond to actual in instances uh, in uh, your in, inside the, the application. And for um, and the fact that the, this kind of uh, um, correspondence exists means that uh, if you don't uh, do something uh, that uh, if, if you write code specific to the database and code specific to your application then you're uh, bound to have a, a lot of uh, repetition things that seem uh, very much very similar you will have to write uh, both code that inserts into the database uh, from an instance that you already have in your memory you will have a code that reads a raw data from the database and uh, loads it and instantiates uh, objects uh, inside uh, your application. And when, as your application grows and you want to persist more objects, then this can cause a, a lot of boilerplate and, repeated, uh, uh, and repeating yourself a lot. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this is one kind of issue that uh, you uh, encounter, and uh, when, when uh, after doing some uh, database programming, then you will eventually reach a, a point where either you will Google uh, the concept of uh, ORM, if you know it uh, exists, or you will probably write your own uh, uh, type of uh, ORM. So this is one kind of uh, issues that uh, you encounter. Uh, another issue uh, is the, that uh, most relational uh, databases uh, have an underlying uh, uh, theory of relational algebra, but uh, their interface is usually SQL. And uh, SQL is, and so it means that the API that you usually have for your application to perform uh, all sorts of actions in front of the database you have to convert your, uh, what, what you're doing to a SQL string. And this is not always uh, as easy, so if uh, you managed to uh, read through the XKCD cartoon, uh, so what would happen in this case is that is the case of a SQL injection, but if you don't uh, sanitize your data, for example, uh, then uh, bad people can go to your website and insert all sorts of uh, weird uh, looking things, and uh, essentially the behavior will not be uh, as expected. 
So this is like an extreme case, but it is representative of uh, the fact that writing SQL strings is not like the most uh, uh, idiomatic way to work with a relational uh, database. Okay. Um, so here are a couple of things that we would like to see, we may like to see in a, in a data access layer. And this is not necessarily, and a data access layer is something more general, but uh, the context that uh, we're talking about here is a relational database. So for example, if we want to, uh, to perform our uh, database actions in a way that is idiomatic in, uh, in well, Pythonic, uh, uh, in a way that is Pythonic. We want to reduce uh, boilerplate, as I uh, explained before. And uh, we want uh, uh, everything to be safe and more or less correct. And uh, also to support uh, multiple backends, it's, also, it's uh, very, uh, um, it's, it's not, not always a requirement, but it's a nice thing uh, to have if you can write for multiple uh, backends, such as Postgres, MySQL, Oracle and the, uh, uh, and the rest, and you can use a, a very similar API for all of them. So now let's talk a little bit about uh, SQL Alchemy. So the, 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 what the description for SQL Alchemy says that this is the Python SQL toolkit and object relational mapper. So it's not exclusively an object relational matter, uh, matter uh, and we'll discuss a little bit about uh, the differences uh, as we go along. Uh, the author of SQL Alchemy is uh, Michael Baer. I think he works for Red Hat. And the first release was uh, in uh, 2005. Um, one interesting thing about SQL Alchemy is that it is a very uh, mature uh, library. Uh, it only reached version 1.0 due to the uh, attention to detail, I guess. Uh, it only reached uh, version 1.0 after 10 years of development in 2015. And the current version is uh, 1.2. Um, okay, so let's go into the structure of, uh, of SQL Alchemy. Uh, so, we have a we have a certain we have se several layers uh, of SQL Alchemy. So the, ba the the lower level of the database and the DB API are uh, not not part of uh, SQL Alchemy. This is just uh, what uh, uh, SQL Alchemy builds upon. SQL Alchemy doesn't write a, a SQL Alchemy doesn't contain a database drivers. Instead, it uses a standard uh, called DBAPI, which is a Python standard called from uh, PEP249, uh, which describes uh, at high level how database drivers uh, of relational uh, databases should behave. Um, on, the second, on the second layer, which is a, a SQL Alchemy Core, uh, there are several components. First, there is uh, the notion of a dialect and a, so the whole area of the engine connection pooling and dialect. So uh, although DBAPI is, has done a really good job in uh, standardizing uh, database drivers, uh, it hasn't covered all bases. There, are st there is still some variation between how you access uh, MySQL versus Postgres, etc. Uh, so uh, the dialect is part of uh, SQL Alchemy that, connect, that contains the back-end specific uh, uh, treatment for the different backends. <clears throat> okay, and except that we have a, so the other part of SQL Alchemy core uh, which I'll emphasize uh, in this talk is the metadata and SQL expression language. The metadata is this combination called the schema types. Um, <clears throat> so the schema types, uh, th this is the metadata and it essentially contains, 
it is a, a it is an internal representation. It's a, a, a batch, a bunch of uh, instances that exist inside uh, Python, and uh, when it's uh, they, they are used. Uh, these are classes defined in uh, in uh, the SQL uh, SQL Alchemy uh, uh, library, and they actually describe how the database that we're working with. Uh, is built, which kind of tables it has, what kind of columns uh, each table has, uh, which columns are a part of a foreign, of a, of a foreign key, which, which columns are part of a primary key of the table. Uh, so this is just a description of the database uh, schema and also types. Uh, it's possible to, there are different uh, databases support uh, different types. For example, uh, in recent years, uh, JSON became JSON and binary JSON became uh, types that are supported in uh, uh, in Postgres and I think also in uh, MySQL. So how it, they are treated, uh, how they are treated uh, uh, by SQL Alchemy can also be uh, described here by types. Um, so this is about the metadata and the SQL expression language is actually a way that SQL Alchemy Core enables us as users to construct a SQL statements, which eventually will compile into strings, uh, but it enables us to do it in a very Pythonic way by composing all sorts of, uh, uh, by building actually a, an abstract syntax tree uh, of the expression. Okay. Uh, on top of that, there is the SQL Alchemy uh, ORM. So SQL Alchemy ORM uh, is actually based on SQL Alchemy Core and uses uh, uh, what is provided by SQL Alchemy Core. Uh, and we'll discuss it uh, in the next, in the third slide. Okay. So here are a couple of examples of uh, companies that use uh, SQL Alchemy, and I intentionally uh, put Yelp and Reddit uh, rel relatively large because they are they have uh, they used the SQL Alchemy uh, at the core of their uh, business, at the core of their product. Um, and uh, if we go back, just so uh, Reddit and so both of them began uh, have built abstractions which are not SQL Alchemy ORM, and they have built them on top of uh, SQL Alchemy Core. And uh, recently, uh, in the last uh, couple of years, Yelp also started using the SQL Alchemy Core. Uh, so, um, so this is also uh, another uh, point to mention that to use SQL Alchemy, you don't need uh, to take, you don't need to necessarily Use uh, the SQL Alchemy ORM if you have other abstract. If you have different needs and uh, need different abstractions, then you can build your own on top of a uh, SQL Alchemy of of, uh, of the core. Okay, so let's take a toy uh, example of a database, and this database will contain musicians and groups, and the. Uh, the musicians will have a name, and the groups will have a name, a location, a, at which year it was formed. The, this is the beginning year, and the end year will be the, if it, ex, if, uh, it hasn't, uh, so the end year, if the group was uh, dismantled, then it will be a, a also a set. And we also will have a relation, which uh, says that a certain musician that a certain musician was part of a group between certain years. So, for example, uh, this table musician in group, uh, if we have a, a musician that was part of the group, then left, then joined again, then we will have two entries uh, in this case. So this is like a really small uh, uh, a toy example of a database. So, where do we start? First, we, if we want to work with a, a database, we need to uh, connect to it, and the connection to the database in SQL Alchemy 
both in the core and in the, and when you're using the ORM, is used is being done is, is done uh, by uh, by creating an engine. An engine is kind of a wrapper around the low-level uh, 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 connection that is provided by the driver, and also it does uh, a pool man it, it manages the connection pool of uh, that is that is uh, used. So how can we do? Uh, let's let's look at uh, how we actually perform some uh, query. So the so what we do is we call engine dot connect. We get some wrapper, uh, something which is a, a connection, which wraps a low level DP API connection, and apparently it's uh, it it uh, the, in the recent. Uh, uh, in the recent releases of SQL Alchemy, it's also, it's also a context manager, so we can call it as with uh, engine.connect, and then we can use con the, the connection to execute uh, some, uh, some query. And notice that here we uh, ran the query, uh, which is plain text. We, uh, we haven't uh, uh, used anything, any of uh, what I described about the SQL a expression language, and that's why we have a fix me, and we will fix it. Okay, so as I, dis as I said, to work with uh, the SQL uh, expression language, it makes sense uh, to first declare, a tell C to first uh, use some, uh, uh, some constructs inside the code, that will, tell, uh, that will tell SQL Alchemy what is the database format. And this is the metadata. Uh, part, so the way that we construct the metadata is using concepts that uh, uh, are uh, database concepts such as table, column, foreign key, index. And also we have types. Uh, in this case, these are uh, generic uh, SQL standard types. They uh, do not they're not, uh, they, they are supported in most of the backends or every backend, but we could also use uh, backend specific types. Like I mentioned, if I want to use, uh, uh, if I'm using uh, Postgres and I want to uh, include also a JSON uh, column somewhere, then I can do it uh, at this point when defining the metadata. And first we, call, we construct a metadata object, and then we declare all the kinds of uh, tables uh, that we want in the model. So this is, a, a, this is a, a equivalent to that uh, diagram that I uh, gave before. And one thing that we can do after we define everything in SQL Alchemy in, is that we can uh, ask SQL Alchemy to do all the create uh, for us. So at least it saves us, so if, if we want to do uh, things using uh, SQL Alchemy, it's a really nice thing to have, the fact that you can create uh, the tables without having to duplicate the create statements. Okay. Now, another option is that, for example, if I'm working with an existing database, uh, and uh, I'm just uh, hacking around. I don't want. Sti I, I still don't want to uh, write uh, code uh, nicely to, to, to represent uh, the database. Then one of the things that SQL Alchemy enables is to do a reflection of the database uh, structure. So, for example, if I had uh, uh, these such tables in uh, uh, in the database, then SQL Alchemy would. Uh, then calling reflect would create a metadata object with, sorry, would populate the metadata objects with uh, the actual instances or, uh, that represent the database schema. Okay, so now uh, let's start looking into how we write SQL statements using a SQL Alchemy Core, and specifically this is a, what is called the SQL Expression Language. So, for example, let's say that I want to uh, insert a new entry into, a, into a, an existing table, and the existing table, uh, I'll just remind you, 
Uh, remember that we have a uh, So uh, we have uh, three tables and we have three variables in the Python script, one called musicians, one called groups, and one called musician in group that we will use uh, uh, as we continue. So we want to insert something into, into a table. What we need to do is uh, we construct an insert statement. Instead of writing the actual text for insert, then we construct uh, something that will do the insert. So here we define ins equals insert musicians dot values name is uh, Moan Cohen, and then we execute this with the connection. And what we get back from the connection is something called the result proxy, which, uh, as the name I suggest, is the result of executing a statement on the database. So what can be in a result? So for example, for a, a, so of course, different uh, statements may have different uh, results. And uh, in particular, for example, what do we expect when we do an insert? Then we want to know how many rows we inserted. Uh, one of the things that we are able to, to know also from the result proxy is uh, if this is an insert. And in the case that, it's a, that this is an insert, we can get the last inserted the primary keys. Okay, so the the ins object is uh, the ins object is uh, is so this is the ins object, and what happens behind the scenes is that SQL Alchemy compiles it uh, using the dialect. It compiles the insert statement into a, into two, a pair of two things. First, it's a string of SQL, which still has a placeholders for parameters. And the second is the params, uh, which in this case are, a, which is just a dictionary of the params, in the case for Postgres. Uh, we have similar constructions for, a, for, a, for update and delete. Uh, now let's look at uh, how we do how we do select, select is uh, very similar, so we can construct a select. When, when we do a select, we need to, to give a, 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 as argument a list of things which can be selected. And we get a, a, a syntax of which is a select step, which is a select query. We can also add, we can gradually uh, build our query. See, uh, notice that Q has, uh, was initially declared like as a select. But then we can build from Q, we can, for example, refine a little bit uh, by choosing a specific, uh, by choosing specific, uh, but by being more specific, by adding more conditions, and this will add a where clause. Uh, okay. So, uh, so essentially SQL uh, Alchemy Core enables us to use uh, uh, queries uh, to build queries for executing in the database. Um, it also enables us to combine uh, multiple. Uh, uh, it enables us to combine multiple conditions. For example, if we uh, if we have built an expression previously, then uh, we we are able instead of using one monolithic uh, SQL string, then notice that we can build. The actually the, the Python object which represents this uh, SQL query, uh, Q is actually been uh, it has actually been built from several other components, and this is a really a uh, useful pattern uh, to use when you're using uh, when working with complex SQL uh, queries to separate it into a, a bunch of uh, different uh, um, parts. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, I think we don't have time to uh, cover uh, the ORM, so I'll just show one slide uh, about how you actually build an ORM. So b the, the first part, we only discussed how we can create SQL queries, how we can create SQL statements. There were no uh, uh, application-related classes being mapped into anything. It was just a way to uh, to do the low-level uh, 
work uh, with the database system. Uh, but uh, in practice, in, in many cases, when we want to, act, to, to map the, uh, the objects of our application and persist them, then we need to use a, a mapper. And one of the nice things about, uh, um, about SQL Alchemy ORM is the way that it enables us to construct a new classes uh, that um, <clears throat> so we have we, we get a base from SQL Alchemy and uh, then we use this base to define a mapping from our uh, classes to tables to database tables and this takes care of several things it takes care both of creating a, an init function for, uh, for uh, the mapped classes. Uh, it takes care of uh, how to uh, map it into, uh, how to map it into the database and fetch it from the database. And it actually builds all the metadata that we discussed previously. Uh, so a lot of the me metadata can also be um, constructed from this. Okay, so uh, uh, just uh, an aside, uh, if you're interested in uh, knowing more about uh, SQL uh, Alchemy, uh, then I recommend to get to know a little bit of uh, uh, about uh, this book, <coughs> which uh, SQL Alchemy has been uh, really uh, influenced by, and the old concepts that are used there are uh, also they, are, they, are, they, are, uh, they draw from this book. Um, um, okay, so uh, is it, that is it. Thank you very much. Okay, time for questions. So uh, I think the question was uh, how does SQL Alchemy work uh, with uh, code such as AsyncIO, and currently it's not compatible with uh, AsyncIO. The parts where you get, where you fetch data from uh, the database are not uh, async. So currently it is not uh, supported. There has been, there is a large debate about, uh, there has been at least a large debate, and in the, in the case of SQL Alchemy, uh, then Michael, the maintainer, he, he, mo he judged in, uh, in favor of keeping things as they are for now. Uh, but uh, it's also implied that it may happen in some, at some point in the future, but currently it's not really async compatible. Yes, yeah, so the question was when uh, I would recommend using SQL Alchemy versus uh, Django's uh, ORM. And the thing is that uh, SQL Alchemy, it's uh, uh, divided into two parts like I uh, described before. Uh, so first, if you're writing a Django application, uh, you would probably go with the, the Django ORM. Uh, initially, it seems like uh, more natural. And in general, I would recommend uh, using uh, any ORM, and in particular SQL Alchemy ORM, when the database queries that you're doing are more of a trans have more a trans uh, like are more transactional and are more uh, business lo more implement uh, business lo business logic and in cases that you want to perform complicated business logic on uh, your side now if you notice the, the focus of my talk was a bit about a uh, SQL alchemy core and SQL alchemy core in my opinion has a different uh, has a different uh, emphasis, and I think it's more useful when you do, anal uh, when you do analysis in the database. And uh, the thing that I like about SQL Alchemy is that you can do both. You can do both, use the ORM for, uh, uh, ORM, uh, for tasks that are more like ORM, and you can use the core for things which are more like analysis and, uh, and the like. Okay, so time is up, and thank you very much.